If you're moving to Rochester, Minnesota for a limited time period, say three, four or five years, and you're wondering whether you should buy or rent a home, in this video, we're gonna help you answer that question. The last thing you want is to regret not having bought a home and renting during your time here in Rochester and then missing out on making some money from potentially selling your home or buying a home and then having to sell it for less than you bought it for. So first, I want to share with you a case study looking at what your home payment would be if you bought a house or if you rent. I just recently had a Mayo Clinic fellow reach out to me from watching my YouTube videos and asking whether they should buy or rent a home when they move to Rochester this summer. So that's why I'm making this video because I'm sure there's other people moving to Rochester with the same question. And make sure that you stick around until the end of the video because I'm going to share with you some strategies on how you can be a successful homeowner no matter how long you own the home for. All right, so here is the email that I sent to the fellow. And so kind of the example I use was a uh, home price of about 250000 So let's take a look at what your house payment would be if you bought a home at this price. So here you can see the home price 250 for down payment. I added $0 or 0%, you know, as a resident or a fellow, there's programs where you don't have to do any down payments. And uh, I'm also very conservative. So I like to kind of just, you know, let's say you didn't do any down payment. Obviously there's going to be buyers that will do 5%, 10% or more. Uh, but this would be kind of the, the highest payment you could probably expect. I did a 30 year uh, fixed loan, a 6% interest rate, property taxes, I estimated 2,700 bucks, home insurance, uh, I did, you know, 1,800 a year. So these two items here, property taxes and home insurance, those are going to be uh, variable depending on the property. And then uh, private mortgage insurance or PMI. So that'll be, you know, uh, if you don't do 20%, usually, usually there's PMI. But if you are a Mayo resident or Mayo Clinic resident or fellow uh, or some other jobs, there's op options where you don't have to pay PMI. So I just made that zero, right? So your total monthly payment, if you include principal and interest, which would be $1,499 plus taxes and fees of $375, right? So you would have a total of $1,874. So that would be your payment. If you found a house for $250 that you liked, right? That would be your monthly payment. So now let's look at another example. So let's say the home price was 350. Now I will say the median sale price in Rochester for last month of November was about $290,000. So this, you know, 350 right now would be above that uh, median sale price. So within that sale price, you could expect a house that's, you know, at least three bedrooms, two full bathrooms, close to 2000 square feet, two car garage. So just to kind of give you an idea. Right. Again, for down payment, I, I made it zero interest. I did 6%, 30 year, same as the other option. And then property taxes, I did increase them to about 4,000 and then home insurance. I kept it the same, could maybe be a little bit more, you know, and then PMI, I made zero. So again, you know, with all these options, this might change, but just to kind of give you a ballpark estimate, your total monthly payment will be about $2,581. So now in this kind of analysis case study, I'm a numbers person. You can tell, you know, I just kind of want to give you a range, but now let's look at what would, what you could expect if you were to rent a house. I looked up on Zillow. I went to Zillow and I did, all right, any homes that are three plus bedrooms and two plus bathrooms right now, we're in the winter time as the, as per the recording of this video or the time of recording of this video. And so uh, right now rental prices are going to be a little lower. Usually in the winter, if you're a landlord, you have rentals, you know, you're going to be more competitively priced because you just want to rent your home. You don't want it to just sit in the winter. And so I expect prices in the spring and summer to be higher anyway. So let's take a look at like the most affordable place that I found that's three plus bedrooms, two plus bathrooms. So, uh, here it is. So, you know, it looks like a nice home. Obviously this was, these pictures are from the summer right now. There's snow outside. Today was our first like real snow day. So these pictures look beautiful and this place looks pretty nice, clean, bright, kitchen looks good. So yeah, I mean, this is kind of, I mean, I'm kind of going through these pictures pretty quickly, but this is kind of what you can expect. You know, I think to me, this seems like a really good price. So just to kind of give you a basement, oh, this is a utility room. Basement seems to be finished. This is 2,520 square feet, three bedroom, two bathroom. To me, this looks like a good deal. Obviously, I haven't seen it inside or anything like that. So just to kind of give you an idea, that was a house for $1,450. So if let's say you're looking for that type of house um, and you can find it for, you know, $250,000, right? Your monthly payment would be about $1,874. So if you're just solely looking at numbers, you know, and if this was like a perfect world, then I would say, well, then you should, you should rent because you're going to save, you know, a couple hundred 
uh, you know, dollars per month just renting, right? But you know, we're not, <laughs> we don't live in a perfect world, so there's other things to consider. But now, and you know, that's assuming that you can find a house like that for less than two fifty, which, you know, I don't know, depends depends on what you're looking for, right? But now let's take a look at you know, so this was the lowest. Now let's go look at the highest, so twenty five hundred. So here you have this home, which again, pictures are from the summer. They look so good. Uh, it's four bedrooms, three bathrooms, 2,400 square feet. Looks like a very nice home. Has a deck in the back. It's a walkout basement, which is nice. Uh, you know, finishes seem to be nice. You know, they're not like super updated or anything, but you know, looks, looks good. Uh, looks clean, at least from what I can see in the picture. So, you know, if you can find a house like this one. So oh, actually, no, I wanted to show you something. So, so let's take a look at what this house sold for. So if you see here, this house sold for actually November 23. So not that long ago, it sold for 389. So if we looked at our example here, you know, if uh, at 350, it's 2,581. If we increase that to a 389, obviously your payment is going to be higher, right? So just based on this example, if you're just looking at numbers, you're say, you're going to say, well, I should probably rent because you know, my monthly payment is going to be lower, but let's take a look at some other things to consider. Let's take a look at this other example. So this one for $2,300, this is kind of your uh, typical home, uh, split level home that you'll find a lot here in Rochester. So I'll just kind of scroll through some of the pictures. The house looks really nice, clean, you know, has some nice updates. Wow, look at that closet. That's nice. Nice bathrooms. This looks like a very, very solid home and you'll see a lot of these homes. So it's four bedrooms, two bathrooms, 1,884 square feet. Uh, if we take a look at what this one sold for, uh, this one sold not too long ago either. So let me click here and see. So this one sold actually June 29 of 2022. So this sold for $330,000. And, you know, this is what you would be paying for rent according to this listing. But if we look at, you know, if you look at this example here, so instead of 350, we did 330, your payment is going to be lower. And in this case, it you would be better off buying uh, than selling if you find a house that you like. Uh, again, you know, there's no right or wrong answer. It all depends on what you're looking for. Obviously, like when you buy a home, you have, you know, that pride of home ownership. Uh, you have more flexibility. You can do whatever you want with the house. Uh, you don't have to be asking for permission to your landlord. Um, so those are a lot of the pros. You get some tax benefits, you know, things like that. Um, now, some of the cons, obviously, you know, you have to maintain the home, especially when you sell it. Um, you want to make sure that it's in good shape and you know there's there's more uh basically uh maintenance and things upkeep that you have to do um versus a rental although with a rental oftentimes you have to mow the lawn and you know plow the the, the shovel the snow and do all those things unless maybe you're in like a townhome but again it all depends on what you're looking for you know if you have you know what your household size is if you have kids you know things like that there's pros and cons to everything so now let's take a look at some things that you should do to make sure that you are a successful homeowner the first one is you make money when you buy not when you sell now this is one of my favorite quotes when it comes to investing in real estate for rentals or an investment property and basically what it means is if you buy a good home that's you know low maintenance well kept good location that's when you're gonna really make the money because if you buy a good property when you go to sell it your chances are higher that you're gonna make money off of it so same thing applies like if you're a home buyer looking to buy buy a good property and you most likely will be able to make some money when you sell it in the future number two is to maintain your home Every home is gonna require maintenance, even if it's a brand new home. So make sure that you have some money saved up and that you are proactive when it comes to this. You don't wanna be trying to sell your home and then have a long list of things that you never took care of and now you have to take care of. So keep that in mind. Also, don't pick the cheapest contractor because people will notice on finishes and you won't get the best job done possible. But also don't overspend money in things that won't add value to your home. Number three is don't be house poor. Make sure that you don't you know, spend so much on your monthly payment that now you can't even furnish your house. Make sure that you buy something that will work for your family, especially if it's not like your dream home or if it's something temporarily, just buy something that works for you now. You can always buy your dream home later on. Also, it might be helpful to maybe get some roommates. If it's just you and you have extra bedrooms, you know, you can have them pay for part of your house payment. I know that's something that I did when I bought my first house is I had roommates that would help pay and, 
you know, that's just an option. Doesn't mean you have to do it, but something to maybe think about. Number four is to have a plan B. So you buy your house that's going to work for you while you're here in Rochester. But what if that home in the future could be a rental property? Maybe when you're looking to sell your property it might not be the best time, you know, because of the market or, you know, things can happen. So maybe that property that you're buying now could be a good rental in the future. So that's, you know, just something to consider because if you could rent it out, you know, get some cash flow from it, you know, there's some definitely some tax benefits when you own real estate and you rent it out. Not that I am an accountant, but just from my experience, I've seen that. That's something that then in a year or two years in the future, uh, the market gets better and then you can sell it then, or maybe just keep it as a rental property. So have a plan B. Number five is to work with a professional real estate agent when you buy your home and when you sell it. Also someone that will be willing and able to help you during the time that you own your home in case you have questions about, you know, should I remodel this bathroom? Will I get my investment if I do? What are some other things that I can do to my property? Maybe in a year or two years from now when I sell it to get the best value. I want to kind of keep you updated with your with your home and the investment that you made on it. I have had these clients ask me these questions and I'm happy to go to their uh, home and kind of do a tour of it and kind of give them my professional opinion on what are some things they can do to improve the value and also to enjoy those uh, updates and upgrades uh, while, while they're still living in the house and then also giving them recommendations for contractors and professionals who can get that job done, do a good work at a you know reasonable price. Now, if you have talked to a lender and a realtor and explored all your options, you've looked at, you know, what could you afford home price wise, monthly payment wise, and see, you know, if that's, if you can find a home within that, those ranges that will work for you, maybe you, you can't or you haven't. And, you know, maybe the best option will be for you to rent and that's completely okay. If you are going to rent, here are some things that you should consider so you can have the best experience as a renter. Number one is to rent something that you can afford. This is going to be the same principle as with, you know, buying a home. Number two is to review the lease and ask questions so that there are no surprises later on and there's clear expectations as to what you are signing. And number three is to find a place that has really good reviews online and that, you know, has good communication because from my reviews of uh, apartments here in Rochester, usually the biggest complaint has to do with missed communication. So if a place has good reviews and seems to have good communication, you should be set. If you would like a recommendation of great places to rent here in Rochester, feel free to reach out to me and I will be happy to give you my opinions and suggestions. Please like this video if you found it helpful and you want other people like yourself to benefit from it and subscribe if you want to continue receiving great content like this. Thanks for watching.